Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. We're gonna continue our VX6R series, and today we're gonna to cover a topic. It's a feature I just discovered by thumbing through the manual since it's my new everyday carry radio. Actually, I've been carrying it on and off for a year, but have never really explored this feature. So for those of you who are wondering what kind of range you can get on your HT, specifically your Yaesu HT, uh, with different power levels, different antennas, different terrain, different environments, stick around. All right, so this feature is actually called ARTS. It stands for Automatic Range Transponder System. It's a cool little feature. It is a uh, problem that was looking for a solution, uh, but I actually find it kind of uh, useful for a couple of use cases. So all it does is if you have two compatible ART stations, I've got one on my person and one at the shack at the house. Um, each radio will transmit a subaudible DCS tone every 15 or 25 seconds. It's configurable. And uh, if both stations are able to uh, receive uh, the communication from the other side, both radios are said to be within radio range um, or RF range. So pretty cool. So the applications for this are search and rescue. So if you've got a, uh, a team of searchers and you want to make sure you don't go outside of communications, this feature will actually help uh, alert you uh, with a uh, audible tone and also tell you on the display whether you're in or out of range. Now this would have been really helpful on a uh, soda activation I did with Charlie Red Summer RF and a buddy David where we had to split up and our comps plan that we established was to basically at the top of the hour get on the air and uh, check in on each other. Well, this would have been helpful because if either of us went out of range, him on his FT60, us on our VX6R, uh, they're compatible across different ESU radios, um, it would have alerted either station that we were out of range. So all you have to do is stop, backtrack a bit, get in range, and then probably just traffic your uh, location via voice to your other parties so they know where your last known location was before you dropped out of range. Uh, public service events are also great. Sometimes we'll uh, do remote wilderness events. In fact, those are the only ones I do. And uh, the course may cover, you know, upwards of 22, 25 miles, the ones I've worked at least. And uh, sometimes you'll fall into these dead spots. So before the race, if you're planning that event, you can have one station at net control, another station with the HT, like man portable, go out and establish which geo positions you actually fall out of coverage. And you can overlay that on the map. And that's the exercise we're gonna to do today and really quite simple. So I've got one station at the house. Hold on. All right, that was perfect timing. Uh, that sound actually was Morse code or CW. Arts also has a feature where you can optionally enable CW IDing of your FCC call sign. So since these um, both radios are transmitting every 15 or 25 seconds, to be FCC compliant, you need to transmit your call every 10 minutes. So it does that automatically. I don't even have to uh, worry about it, which is kind of cool. It's annoying, it's annoying if you're um, in an area where you're using a common frequency. Uh, for example, don't use this on the nationwide calling frequency look up your state's band plan and find the simplex frequency that is fairly quiet. And that's what I have done. Um, shit, I lost my train of thought. Damn CW IDing. All right guys, sorry about that little interruption. So uh, basically the experiment we're running today is we're gonna have two VX6Rs. I have one on my person running 300 milliwatts with the stock rubber duck antenna. And then I have one at the shack connected to a J pole antenna that's up about 25 feet and it is also running 300 milliwatts and then basically going on the trail back here in the Tonto National Forest that I typically run and whenever I hit a dead spot we're going to go ahead and capture that geo coordinate and also put some notes on what type of radio time of year conditions all of that stuff so we can build a historic map of what type of RF coverage we get in this particular area. So really cool, and this is the use case I really want to cover. Uh, so far I've covered 1.7 kilometers, so just a little bit over one mile. Uh, not point to point, but following the course I typically run. So we're gonna keep going until we run into a dead spot and uh, talk about it. All right, folks, so we're six kilometers out and I'm still in range with 300 milliwatts. Uh, we're basically coming up on four miles here. Um, it is approaching 7.30 a.m. local time, and it's gonna be about 90 degrees here in about 30 minutes, so I need to cut this short. So what I'm gonna do is remove the antenna, 
and this will simulate us hopefully dropping out of range and it should take less than two minutes uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, the radio will try four attempts i have mine set for 25 seconds so in about 100 seconds this should uh, report that it's out of range so what did we learn today well i learned that 300 milliwatts is absolutely incredible in terms of my ability to communicate in this terrain on the lowest power settings that are capable with my gear so this is a game changer um, i've also learned that paired with my garmin gps i can actually track pretty easily with um, either taking pictures of the gps coordinates or just with good old-fashioned right in the rain notebook and paper uh, okay so now we're out of range i can go ahead and log uh, those positions and our public service season uh, just finished, and I only worked two events, mostly because I didn't have the time to dedicate to understanding the full communications plan, the prep beforehand, uh, working uh, a shift of 12 to 24 hours. But now what I'm thinking, and this is going out to the Maricopa County Emergency Communications Group guys, I would be more than happy if there's a course that we need to do, we want to set up a net control station, and I will run the course with an arts compatible station and we can actually track all of the uh, dead zones that's a really cool application in my mind for arts now for you preppers out there this is not the kind of thing you're going to want to do in an emergency or an shtf situation because you are spraying rf traffic every 15 or 25 seconds so it would be easy to pinpoint your location so it also could be fun as a fox hunting exercise too uh, whereby you can try to triangulate uh, someone's position who is constantly beaconing with an arts compatible station. So uh, with that said guys, I want to be able to make the last four miles home here within about an hour and 20 minutes. So with that said, hopefully you guys enjoy this video and this small series on the VX6R. The manual is very good at um, explaining what you need to do. Um, off the top of my head, uh, you basically need to um, enable arts, uh, set the uh, DCS tone uh, to the same tone for each station, optionally turn on CW uh, IDing with your uh, FCC call sign, and that'll allow you to be FCC compliant since both stations are transmitting automatically and you do need to announce your call every, every 10 minutes. Uh, so take a look at the manual, see if you have it. Um, I'm finding it as a great tool for uh, basically just understanding one's area. So my 300 milliwatt use case with these radios using the rubber duck is not going to be your use case. If you're in another part of the country with different terrain, you will have very different results, but at least you'll be able to take the information you gathered from this to see what's possible in your area. All right, guys, um, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Oh, and if you guys are still watching, I want to thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, I've got some new gear coming in that's new to me. We're going to be taking a look at my MSA uh, Sorden Ear Pro. I've got a Disco 32 uh, PTT cable for this radio. And I think that'll be the next uh, video. If not, we're going to go ahead and cover the DigiRig integration with the VX6R.